Hey guys, welcome on back. Drinks with Binks with Nick Kiprios. We're playing a game now called Truth or Sip. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. You can either tell the truth or you can sip. And I think we're going to ask like four, uh, five or six questions. I don't know, but you, you, you can't sip them all, okay? <laughs> you can't waste all your sips up front. Or you can if you want. Okay, first off, worst coach you've ever had? I had, I had good coaches here. Pick it up, pick it's it up. It's not fair for me to say. It's not fair for me to say Mike Keenan, but I, I, I will say Mike Keenan, and it's not for the reasons why you would think. I thought he was uh, a guy that got the job done. We won the Stanley right. Cup. You can never deny it. But you know how far he pushed to to make it happen. How many how many people that he had to kind of almost break to make it happen? Uh, probably too many to my liking. Okay. So, um, okay, Mike Keenan. I will say. Worst coach you've ever had. All right, we got to pick these up I'm, a bit. I'm, no, Mike won the Stanley Cup. Yeah, so well, I, you already said his name, so it's out know, there. So that's, right. that's too bad for you. You didn't sip on that one, I guess. <laughs> um, all right, let's, we'll pick this up. Team you played for that you wish you could scrub from your resume. It, it meant so much to me to put the jersey on for the Toronto Maple Leafs, but it wasn't a great experience for me. It wasn't because the team was on the downside. It started getting stripped. They traded the likes of Doug Gilmore. They traded the likes of Kirk Muller. You know, if I could strip that that outside of my childhood dream okay. coming true, if I could strip that, th those losses, I would strip those with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Wow, wild stuff here. Strip and get out of town, Toronto Maple Leafs. Most rated player in the NHL right now. Overrated. Uh, right now, uh, uh, Jack Eichel. And it's got nothing to do with his talent, but everything to do with his ability to make people around him better. Okay. Uh, last one. Um... I haven't sipped yet. What's going on? What would you do if you saw Ryan Vandenbush? I would um, crack open a little Buddha and I I cheer him for for playing the game hard. I thought you were gonna say crack open his head. No. And, and just sort Listen, of like, I, you know. I, Give him a little I, of your I, I talked Buddha. a lot about it, Julie. People think that I would hate him for for ending my career with one punch at Madison Square Garden. And it couldn't be uh, further from the truth. He played the game hard. He beat me fair and square. And I dusted myself off and, and broadcasted for 21 years after that. So not a bad consolation prize yeah, for Yeah, and for who him knows what that career. guy's doing now. Uh, nothing. Nothing like Nick Kiprios here on Drinks oh, with Banks. No, no. Ryan's a good we man. we got to go Ryan's to break. Man. But that was a lot of fun. No sipping at all. Just all truth. But we will sip on this little Buddha. We're here with Nick Kiprios. Don't go anywhere. Drinks with Banks. to get out of here. Well, not a face shield, but I did successfully accomplish the look of Beekeeper or the guy from I Know What You Did Last Summer. We are quite literally taking the show on the road all the way up to God's country. No one here. I made it to Canada, God's country, the place that's taken coronavirus seriously. And thankfully, I now just have to go put myself into a jail cell for two weeks. Well guys, I made it inside my quarantine cell that I'll be in for the next two weeks. The host left me some ketchup chips that I already crushed, obviously. It's gonna be so lit in here the next two weeks. Just me and like the TV and it's just like gonna be wild. Cheers Toronto. It's great to be back.
Hey guys, welcome on into Drinks with Banks. I'm Julie Stewart Banks. So we're still staying home to stay safe, but you may notice home looks very different than it has the last couple of months. I am currently north of the border. I am in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This is the CN Tower. It is not the Space Needle, as many people have seemed to call it. We are here right now in quarantine because when you go across the border from the United States into Canada, right now you have to quarantine, self-isolate, for 14 days. So that means I'm in this unit here right now. I cannot even leave. I cannot even go to the elevator, go down and pick up food or something like that. Someone has to come bring it to me, which is actually amazing, but it's also just a great recipe to go absolutely banana sandwich. But I'm already there. I mean, it's, we've been home for 150 days at this point. What's another two weeks by yourself in a hamster wheel? But you know what's also really cool? is we're in Toronto and right now the NHL bubble, the NHL's return to play, one of them is right here. It's actually like not that far. It's, it's very, very close. And some of the NHL players are just in hotels just around the corner, but I will never see them because I can't see them because that's just part of the protocol. But also again, I cannot leave this glass case of emotion that I'm in. But that makes it a perfect stage for us to dive into the NHL with a guy that a lot of people in Canada know and around the league, around the world, none other than Nick Kiprios, former Stanley Cup champion, played 422 games in the NHL. You know him as a fantastic NHL analyst, now has his show Real Kipper at Noon with Line Movement, where he's also the director of Hockey Ops. Kipper, thank you so much for joining us here today. Oh, thank you, Julie, and uh, congratulations with all your success, and, and welcome to my neighborhood. You are in my hometown. I was born and raised in Toronto. I got a chance to wear the Toronto Maple Leaf uh, uniform. Not many uh, local Toronto kids get mm -hmm. to do that, so I'm, I'm one of the few, but uh, welcome. Thank you. I really appreciate that. And I got to ask, like, where are you in Toronto now? Where are you? I am. I, ha I have a home here. Um, I was very fortunate when I got into broadcasting that uh, headquarters for uh, at the time it was CTV Sportsnet. And we're going way back, Julie, to mm -hmm. 1998. Um, and I just retired as a Toronto Maple Leaf. I was like I said, I was born here. I was raised here. I've got my family here, uh, friends and family. And I was able to land a job with uh, Sportsnet. Uh, and for 21 years, I was with that organization. And most recently, just uh, parted ways last year and took a break and decided to get back into the game a little bit. So I, I, I built this studio in my it's house. Pretty nice. And I'm watching all of you uh, turn into uh, sensations uh, digitally. And I'm like, I, I got to jump on that wagon. So I was able to partner with a company here in Canada that's in the online gaming industry and they wanted content. And I said, I can do your hockey content. All I got to do is basically do what I've been doing for 21 years at Sportsnet. And so we've, we've come to the, this studio right here and, uh, I'm trying to catch up, Julie. That's what I'm trying to do in the last uh, 12 months. Man, I wouldn't say catch up. Like, you're ahead of the game. You you already have a home studio when all of us are trying to just, like, create a home studio. Right now, I have a million lights around me. Thank you to my friend Clayton Hansler, who sent these to me so I could actually have a little bit more of a, of a scene here in, in this Airbnb. But you have a whole setup. I've watched your show, Online Movement. Saw an old buddy, Doug McLean, on yes. a recent episode, which I want to get into a little bit later on. But we are drinking and binking on this episode, and I thought it was so fortuitous that you actually have a connection with a beverage company right now. Yeah. Tell me, what are we drinking, and why are we drinking it? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, you know, part of my plan when, when I decided to uh, not renew uh, with Sportsnet was to take a year off. And it was the first time uh, since I came out of minor hockey that I was able to kind of take a deep breath and not put the, 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 uh, my foot on the pedal uh, year after year with our great game. And not that I didn't love it anymore, but I just needed a mental break. And part of that mental break was kind of twofold. Um, not that I necessarily planned either, uh, but I was uh, was presented with an opportunity to write a book for Simon & Schuster, which is a bit of a memoir of, of my life growing up in Toronto. Uh, Greek immigrant uh, parents, both came from 
uh, Greece uh, at a young age. My dad fell in love with the game of hockey, although uh, he couldn't. The only ice that he knew was in drinks, not in, uh, <laughs> not 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 that you skate Sounds over. Right. Yeah. But um, I was able to fall in love with the game and parlay that into uh, a 12-year professional career, and then ultimately 21 years uh, with Sportsnet, including the last five with Hockey Night in Canada. So it's a it's a I hope it's a good story. I hope it's inspiring to people. And I hope uh, everybody gets a chance to uh, enjoy it. So there was the book. And then, to your point, uh, a beverage company. And my wife and I partnered with uh, good friends of ours. We were all kind of at this crossroads of, of where we were in our life and, and whether or not I was going to even think about uh, signing a new contract with Sportsnet. And for whatever reason, we started talking about uh, uh, beverages, what we liked, what we didn't like, how we were, the bo our, our bodies were changing. And all of a sudden, I, I couldn't drink beer like I used to. Then it became, could we create a drink that we like? Could we create our, our dream drink? And what would that be? And then we went through a list a little bit. We went no sugar. And then uh, we went uh, gluten-free. And then we said, what about organic? Um, there might be one or two, but... Great. Nope. These are great buzzwords. Yeah. For... And, and we're like, okay, let's make it all organic. And if and my wife, God bless her, she stuck with it. I would have quit about a thousand times trying to make it organic because it's so hard. There's yeah. so many uh, hurdles you got to jump and hoops you got to go through. And, and there's a reason why there's not a lot of cans out there mm -hmm. that say organic. It's because it's really hard to do. But she yeah. stuck through it. She made it organic. And then there's keto-friendly. I'm not even sure what keto-friendly meant before Man, that's, we started. I mean, you, you're checking all the boxes for yeah. millennial days. Keto-friendly, so, gluten-free, no preservatives, no added sugar, naturally sweetened. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And but, let's let's take a little taste test of it, Nick. Yeah. So, and, and, and the most important one, though, Julie... Above all those things, it, it yeah, it has to taste really it has good. Has to taste good. So there we are. So I'll crack one open. I will say yes. Uh, these I've noticed in Canada, these ready to drink bevies are very popular. Um, yes. We don't really have as many in the U.S., so maybe we'll just bring these over and uh, okay, cheers. we will. Yeah, let's cheer. What are we toasting to, Kipper? We're we're, we're toasting to you being uh, in Canada. That's what we're doing. Yes, in God's country. I'm there back in go. God's country. I'm safe. Yeah. You know, a place that does the pandemic well. Okay, let's go. Yeah, there you go. So we, Ooh, we think nice. we were able to check a lot of boxes, like you said, mm -hmm. and be in a situation where we saw uh, an incredible opportunity in an industry that just hasn't stopped the momentum. No. And Alcohol can... is a good industry to be in. Yeah. Uh, sports well, and booze. And we got to take a quick break, but we'll we'll talk more about all this. Uh, I have been I have been chomping at the bit to try one of these bad boys. I already have two. I have two ready to go. Um, all right. We've got a whole lot more to talk with Nick Kiprios. We're drinking a little. We're drinking a little little Buddha here on drinks with Binks. Don't go anywhere, guys. Hey, I'm Anson Carter, and I'm having drinks with Binks. Hey guys, welcome back into Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB, and I'm so happy to be joined by former Stanley Cup champion, former analyst on Hockey Night in Canada and Sportsnet, and now host of Real Kipper at Noon on Line Movement, none other than Nick Kiprios. Also, we've been drinking his drink, Little Buddha, very fantastic. We got grilled pineapple and rosemary. I'm a huge fan of it, and uh, I, I've already got like a bunch ready to go. So kudos to you on this. Thank and you. all my friends, by the way, my friends, when yeah. I told them about this, they're like, oh, that's a really good drink. So oh, good. So they've, yeah. You know, big, it's a big deal. When we started out, um, we actually got a chance to uh, develop it and then uh, pitch it at the LCBO. And for those of you that aren't familiar with the LCBO, they're one of the biggest uh, buyers in the world right here in Ontario. And to be able to uh, get in that store that has roughly around 600 uh, in the uh, in the area of uh, the province of Ontario, uh, it's a big deal. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very difficult to get product on this shelf. Uh, and they do over a 
billion dollars in, in sales every year. So that was a, a, an amazing accomplishment for a company that we're told that uh, usually needs to be around three or four years before products end up on the on well, the shelf. So it might we have helped that they had a, a big name like you pushing uh, well, pushing some booze because that that never hurts. Yeah. And, well, oh. whatever it was, we we're very grateful that we were able to get uh, the pineapple and rosemary. Uh, on the shelves and it's it's been selling very well and we've got a second one and it's a it's a natural peach tea which is right Ooh. here and this one unfortunately is not available in the lcbo i uh, know i looked i was looking for all the different flavors <laughs> yeah but it, it is on um selected patios uh and, and golf courses which is are considered our soft launch That's, but we're hoping yes, it will be available uh, next year and we're also hoping to expand out of Ontario. So we, we wanted well, to focus locally. It's a local product. We wanted to focus locally. And so far, uh, it, it's done very well. So we're hoping to to expand that in Canada and maybe soon get into the U.S. That would, that yeah, would be a, well, a big goal of ours. I can help you with that. We can conquer the Manhattan market. As I, I'm quite familiar with many different uh, establishments that sell alcohol and of of the like and just a quick little note people in the states that are watching this lcbo that's where you buy booze you cannot buy booze at a grocery store you know. that's something with this country that i just i i cannot i just i hate yes but you know what i love about this country is look at that view oh my god i just love seeing that cn tower and it is so close to where the nhl is beginning to play it is a return to play i cannot even believe that this is happening considering the last couple of months and we are right now uh we are in real time heading into the night before the the debut of the return to play of course shooting this on a wednesday nick we've seen a lot of other leagues come to return mls nba yeah. mlb uh nwsl what do you think about the nhl's return to play what are like two things that that you like or dislike about it well first of all julie i gotta ask you were you a believer that this was going to get pulled off or you were you one of those uh a month ago that said it's not happening oh i was deaf i'm a i'm a corona truther and i was like no chance yeah yeah so in saying that i think it's quite remarkable that they were able to come together and on a couple of fronts, uh, number one was they extended a CBA, which we've heard out of different leagues still, there are some mm -hmm. issues. So that was great. And number two, <clears throat> excuse me, they were able to create this true bubble. And we, we talked uh, weeks ago, even a month ago, saying, okay, if they create a bubble, there's no way they're going to keep the players in. They're going to sneak out. They're going to find their patios. They're going to find their bars. And sure enough, no, it, it is iron tight mm -hmm. in terms of both Edmonton and, and Toronto. And if you're not at the hotel, if you're not at the rink, and if you're not on an exclusive path between both that only has access to you and, and other players and other members of your organization, uh, nobody saw that coming. I thought for sure there'd be some leakage somewhere. Yes, yeah, same. And it, there isn't. And I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that they were able to do this because I said this right from the get-go is that, you know, even, Julie, if it shut down, even if they went five or ten minutes or a, a week and it got shut down, at least we tried. At mm -hmm. least... You know, we, we, we listen to our medical doctors and, and, and people around us that gave us hope that there might be a chance if we can keep the virus on the outside looking in. And so far, they've been able to do that. And can they do it for two months? I'm not sure. But I, I think the effort that they've put in, in in giving themselves the best opportunity to do it and have been able to do it much better than Major League Baseball and we'll see where the NBA is at in uh, perhaps a few days or a week from now or longer remains to be seen. There's the NFL. But so far, head and shoulders, uh, the best marks go to Gary Bettman and the National Hockey League Players Association in, in Donald Fear.
Yeah, they've done a great job because there is no Disney wide world of sports for hockey. It can't just sort of uh, shut down a whole area and have many rinks. Um, you could do that in like northern Ontario where there's just like rinks and rinks and rinks. But um, but I got to ask you, though. So we know that it's shut. We know that it's so tight. I've talked to a couple PR guys in the league who are like, it's so sterile. There's there's no way guys are going to be on Tinder because there's no way to go in and out of this place without someone being alerted. Yeah. What would a in a general sense? say you're back playing in the league, you're in your 20s and you have to go do this and you might not see your family yeah. until October. What would a young Nick Kiprios think of this situation? Yeah. I, 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 I'd be an all-in guy, Julia. I, I've been that way my, my whole career from the moment I think I, I, can, I can remember. Now, you know, when you're really young and you're minor hockey, you're, you're not sure what that means and then you've got lapses where... Maybe you're, you're not sure about the commitment that you want to make. But once I got through, I think, uh, the latter part of my junior career and I started in the American Hockey League and the NHL, I'm, I, I'm all in. So I, I don't think I would have had a problem if someone told me I have a chance to get my name on the Stanley Cup and this is what it's going to take. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I don't see it as a big sacrifice. I, I really don't. And... You know, everybody's asking, is this going to feel real? Is it, is it, is it, uh, put an asterisk beside, you know, this whole year? Uh, it's a fake Stanley Cup. It's not a real one. I don't buy that. I, I don't. I think as athletes, Julie, when, when we're in a competitive environment, we want to win all the time. I remember being on a flight in my, in my rookie year and I'm, I'm playing, uh, I'm playing cribbage on a flight with, Mike Liute. Mike Liute was you know, a star goalie with the St. Louis Blues, and he played against the Russians in a Super Series for, in, for the NHL and Team Canada. And we're playing this goofy game called Cribbage, and I, I pegged one extra point, and he punched me really hard. And he said, <laughs> don't cheat, you know? And people are – this is when we've, we were flying commercial, and people were looking at us going, what is your problem here? <laughs> And he's no. like, he didn't want to lose. He didn't want to lose. And yeah, NHL uh, my, players are like that, though. I've seen that on so, being on team charters before. You'll, you know, you're you're competitive about over everything. Yeah. So won't we see the same thing? Mm -hmm. I hope in this. Yeah. And is it perfect? Absolutely not. I watched the exhibition games, and I, I don't care how many screens you have, how many stages you have, how many videos of the fans cheering you have. It sucks, no fans. There's just, you can pick it up. It's, it's a vibe. The en energy's a vibe, and you don't get it in an empty building. And I get that, and I'm going to watch it, and I'm forever going to say when I watch this, that part sucks. Mm -hmm. But I'll take this over nothing at all. Right. As long as we have the competitive spirit of the players I think I think we have a chance to have some fun here in the next couple of months. Yeah, definitely. And if for whatever reason a fight ends up breaking out in the actual action, which we don't see a lot in the playoffs, you got to think they they're going to have some some yeah. cheering or some booing, any week. of that stuff. We we saw Edmonton and Calgary this week. There was there's some there's some animosity, some bad blood there uh, in in an and the, exhibition the, game. And the 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 fake sound noises reflected that. Yeah. I, yeah, we got to step that up. I'm big on that, too, with the uh, the Astros, the booing. I need to see that in MLB yeah. or uh, just anything with the MLB going forward. We have to take a quick break. We're going to have a whole lot more with Nick Kiprios. We're sipping on a little, little Buddha here on Drinks with Banks. Don't go anywhere. What's up, everybody? My name is Jackie Redman, and I had non-alcoholic drinks with Banks. It was still fun. Boo. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm JSB. We've got Nick Kiprios here, former Stanley Cup champion. Also now a an alcohol guy. Uh, I guess you've probably always been an alcohol guy as being a <laughs> Canadian and a hockey player. But I uh, got your little Buddha that we are sipping on right now. We've been talking about the NHL return to play and we're in Canada and both of the bubbles are in Canada in Toronto and in Edmonton, which is different from any other league. In what way do you think 
the the return to play being in this country that does not have nearly the amount of cases of coronavirus as the states will be potentially a major factor for it succeeding. Well, as, as far as, you know, being Canadian, um, I'm, I'm thankful that, you know, our numbers haven't climbed up uh, anywhere near uh, the rate, obviously, in the United States. And that was a key factor. Listen, the NHL wanted desperately to be in Vegas. Uh, the plans were up until maybe less than a week of naming Toronto and Edmonton as the hub cities. Uh, Vegas was it. But it was just that one stretch where the numbers just kept climbing and they wouldn't stop. And finally, they had to make that, that, that key decision. But Julie, this is really about the players and the league salvaging anything that they can uh, to save this season. And, you know, say what you will. The, you know, the, here, here it is in a nutshell. The players are not playing because they want to. They're playing because they feel like they have to. And there's hundreds of millions of dollars still on the line for them. So they, they got to create something that uh, puts them in a position where they can move forward. And when I mean that... Uh, the league does not want to own uh, O, NBC, or Sportsnet, one one dime uh, on their on their television contracts. There's sponsorships involved. This is still a money maker for the National yeah. Hockey League. Not nearly as much money as was on the table, but they're trying to make sure that when this season is concluded, they don't owe anyone any inventory. Which I mean extra games to regional uh, broadcasts, to national broadcasts, and of course, um, inventory on, on some of their major sponsors for this right. season. If they get this off the books, which a Stanley Cup championship would do, then Gary's really going to focus on a new U.S. national contract, which would bring in billions of new dollars to the players and the owners, and that's the focus here. And is it just NBC this time? Is it ESPN? Mm -hmm. I'd keep an eye on is it Amazon. Fubo TV, you know. It, it could, could be, be you guys. It could be <laughs> national games brought to could you by. Could be line movements, yeah. Hey, who knows? But we'll keep an eye on that. But at least Edmonton and, and Toronto gave them a chance to finish mm -hmm. this thing and, and crown a Stanley Cup champion. I hope it. I hope we see it through. Yeah, and I, and I think that's the most important point that people have to remember is that uh, there is so much money at play. There is a, It's not just, oh, do we come back because this is the right thing to do. It's we have to pay all these bills. We don't want to be on the hook for this kind of stuff. Oh. And so that's why all of these leagues are trying, even the ones that really shouldn't be trying to make something happen out of what they have. Um, very, very quickly, though, uh, I do want to ask you, you did mention the NHL, and we were just talking about this during the break. But the idea that there's no media um, like yeah. allowed in the bubble, but that yeah, the NHL it's a bit of a story, is, uh, yeah, developing is here. A, what do you think about this? Well, um, I, I'd be really ticked off if I was uh, uh, covering the National Hockey League all season long, and now I'm on the outside looking in. So, uh, just to bring everybody to speed, now um, nobody is allowed in, in the hub uh, except maybe a, a few selective people. Um, you mean the bubble or the hub? Uh, uh, both, to be honest hubba, with you. And we're hubba, talking, hubba. We're talking yeah. about coverage. We're talking about coverage inside uh, uh, both uh, the Rexall Center and, and the uh, Scotiabank Arena in Toronto. Okay. So no, no, the, the media have not been invited yes. into uh, the arena and therefore have to really do what they've been doing all uh, unlike what they've been doing all season, and that's having access to watch the game live and then go and interview players and coaches that's been taken away from them the only media that is allowed uh say on on the main level uh to cover uh the league to cover the players to interview the players is the nhl.com and of course we know that people that write for the nhl.com are employees of the national hockey league and this is really upset a lot of the professional writers that cover the National Hockey League, they, they, they deem it unfair. Yeah, it's and a bit of a conflict of interest, too. 
Well, yeah, and that's what they're claiming. Kind of more so controlling the narrative in a way. Exactly. You've been around long enough to know exactly how they feel. Oh, I live in America. Okay, we see yeah. a lot of this every single day. Yeah. So um, um, there, there is some talk that they will file a grievance, and I'm not sure, you know, exactly who hears it and how it gets done, but there's no doubt that uh, uh, they don't think it's very fair yeah. uh, that uh, they don't get to have access uh, at least um, like, like the NHL.com would have. Right. And, and we're all saying this because we, we understand that access shouldn't, you know, because of the coronavirus, we don't want players and media coming in and out. Well, there's a safety of, uh, issue and, and there's yeah, no question issue, about but that. But this is that everyone should be, if you're yes. doing it to one person, you got to have to do it to everyone else. That's right. Um, and, you know, we want the same safe practice opportunities that NHL.com is, is, is been granted. Then um, then we just want it fair. That's all they're looking mm-hmm. for. OK, yes, fair. And we are in the country um, of fair, I believe. And we want to play something fun with you, Nick. Uh, this is one game that is based on the return to play. It's called Pucks in Deep. Also okay. a really cliche title. Should I open up where... another can? I'm, I'm done. Yeah, well, you're already one. done your first one? I am, yeah. Oh, great. I was wondering where your ears was. I was like, oh, yeah. my. Did he just, yeah, like, yeah, not it's way over drink here it anymore? It's empty. OK, it's empty. Well, I, I better uh... mm-hmm. catch up. Mm-hmm. I gotta catch up a bit. So what I was thinking, I'm gonna ask you a question. First thing, that, first team that comes to your mind to this question, like rapid fire, just say it. And then I think what we should do, and I'm making this up right now, <laughs> we should take a sip, okay? okay? And then the next one, and then sip. We'll just keep going as quickly as we can. I gotta focus. It's like, you know, Julia, I, I never went first in practice because I was the guy that screwed up the drill. Yeah, same. I would st- I would go on the ice with my my skate guards. So yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah that's yeah, that's, that's not okay. very fun. Okay, <laughs> I'm ready. All right, so pucks in deep. We have got uh, first team that comes to your mind. Biggest surprise, the biggest beauty team of the return to play. Uh, Vancouver Canucks. Okay, sit. Next up, team that will benefit from this long layoff. Boston Bruins. Okay, Bruins. Team that is going to suffer the most because of the layoff. I think St. Louis may have lost their edge a little bit. You know, Julie, there was some talk that uh, out of the out of all the teams that they may have not wanted to come back and play uh, the most. And I'm, who knows how many guys felt that way throughout the team. I, you're not going to get 20 guys that don't want to play, but there was a couple that were really apprehensive about coming back. So it'll be interesting to see if they pick up the. Uh, that, that Stanley Cup edge that they had uh, last season. Or, or pick up the Stanley Cup. Sounds like we got a couple Corona truthers on that team. All right. Mm. Remember to sip. Oh, got to yeah. sip. That's part of it. Got to get you a little buzz doing this. I can't this. keep up with you, Julie. I know you can't. It's it's no one. Not many people can. Um, team that will do the best without fans. Can I include my Hartford Whalers when I played there? Because we never played in front of fans. Oh. <laughs> Uh, um, cheers that is a good one that is a good one uh, how, how about the Florida Panthers they kind of similar there's a lot of mm-hmm. nights that Doug McLean tells me man did you see how many empty seats were there last night mm-hmm. yeah sunrise does not do well mm. I would have said the Toronto Maple Leafs because the fans always get in their head uh team that's gonna have uh speaking of a uh, team that's gonna have an early exit shocker Boston Bruins Okay. How about that? You did also say they would be the biggest surprise and biggest beauty, but maybe surprise in the, an exit. Well, I just yes. think that uh, the longer yep. we start, to, the longer we talk Bruins about them, out. the more pressure there is for them mm-hmm. to deliver because they are, in my opinion, the odds on favorite here to win. So that, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah, you know, they pressure. got they great experience in, in yeah. uh, Patrice Bergeron leading them with Chara, but. Yeah, they're not going to do well, I don't think. They, they, could, think they could get upset depending on the seeding as yep. well. Yeah, they'll probably, they'll probably be out first. Okay, great. That was straight from the lips of Nick Kiprios. Uh, cheers. We've been having a lot of fun here sipping and making predictions on Pucks in Deep. We have a whole lot more to come on Drinks with Things. Don't go anywhere. we got Nick Kiprios. Hi, I'm Ron Duguay, and I enjoyed having drinks with Binks.
Hey guys, welcome back to Drinks with Binks. I'm Julie Short Binks. We've got Nick Caprio's former Stanley Cup champion analyst on Sportsnet, formerly, and Hockey Night in Canada, and now has his show Real Kipper at Noon with Line Movement. And uh, Nick, I got to ask you, with you, you mentioned your new show, and I was watching it last night, and Doug McClain, former NHL general manager, one of your longtime buddies on Sportsnet, you guys were on together. And first of all, I just thought when I watched you guys talking, I was like, these two guys could just be talking to literally no one. And they would still just be having like these great in-depth hockey conversations. Because you know you guys just love it so much. Yeah. What's an analogy or like maybe another duo or something that you would relate your relationship with Mac to? Oh, gosh, that's uh, that's a really good question. And I don't know if on the spot I can kind of give you an answer. But, um, you know, Doug... Doug's older than me, so sometimes I find myself, don't tell him this, but kind of learning from him, but at the same time, you know, um, also being in a position where uh, I, I consider him a friend, a colleague, and, and sometimes, you know, because you're so close, you're actually calling him on his BS every once in a while, too. And I don't know why it works between us, but I think what it comes right down to it is that I certainly have all the respect in the world on, on how you start out in the business and work your way up. And he was a president and general manager of the Columbus Blue Jackets. He was entrusted in, in starting that organization. Not many people get to do that. He's worn a lot of hats. And then I would hope that he would look at me and say, here's a kid that not wasn't necessarily a, a can't miss prospect. And he found a way to make it work. Not only did he do it once, but twice in his career um, in broadcasting. So I, I think there's a ton of respect, but it doesn't get overkilled when every once in a while we step step out of our lane. Mm -hmm. We call each other to get back in our lane. So I think that's what it why why it works. And I first met Doug when I was a member of the Washington Capitals. We were together, and then we were get we were together briefly when I did a a conditioning stint uh, in Baltimore, and he had just got fired with Brian Murray. So we've been through a lot. And uh, and I hope, you know, when, when you speak of us together in front of nobody or a million people, <laughs> you feel like you're still going to get the same conversation. And, and that's, I think, what makes it work best for us. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, the chemistry that you guys had and, of course, others of the like of John Shannon and Scott Morrison and Darren Millard and... And the panel yeah. on, you know, Hockey Central and Hockey Nine Canada. Was, yeah, uh, we had a great run. Yeah, really, really great run, a really good staple. But then, of course, you know, all of you guys were essentially gone at the same time. You yeah. helped launch the network. What was the hardest part about, you know, really having to leave Sportsnet? Yeah, uh, first of all, I, you know, you, you, you take the pros and cons out of everything. And it's it's not... It's not easy leaving after 21 years and the only job that you actually had a, an interview for. I've never had a job interview in my life. Uh, that was the first one. And, you know, I, I, I wrote this story in my book, which is coming out uh, in, in the fall. It's a memoir. It's called Undrafted. And I was never drafted in the NHL. So I hope it's an inspiring sport, uh, story for everybody out there listening uh, my biggest message in my book is there's many there's many roads to take to get to the same destination and uh, mine was you know like yeah. this way oh, and, yeah you know the the Stamkos and the Connor McDavid's of the world are straight mm -hmm. and I got a few detours so in, in saying that I, I I hope it's a it's a book that uh, you know people can can really be inspired off of but the hardest part to to come full circle here is just saying goodbye on a daily basis of course we got friends for life but on a daily basis the people that you're used to dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis are no longer there and you kind of miss the camaraderie much like a nhl dressing room julie you go in there you rip on each other my favorite saying every time i went to sports and that was misery loves company and <laughs> You know, if they were complaining, whining, I'm like, hey, yeah, okay, well, here's the world's smallest violin. Yep. But, That's what we do you know, it's, it was just time to move on. And then 12 months later, I've got a new team here at linemovement.com. 
And I was able to, you know, convince Doug McLean to come and have some fun again. And uh, it's, it's now involved with a brand new sector and it's an online gaming company that uh, because Gary Bettman opened up the doors now for NHL uh, games, uh, 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 giving away their data and, and likeness and images uh, for the sake of sports betting, mm-hmm. it's opened up a whole new world. So I don't know, Julie, are you are you someone that right before puck drop would go to your phone and say, hey, I'm going to put five bucks on the Boston Bruins? I would never put money on the Bruins because I hate them. <laughs> but I okay. would. <laughs> where are you putting your five bucks? <laughs> Uh, no, you know what? I haven't bucks. been one of those people because I just like haven't set it up yet and all that kind of stuff and been, yeah. like link your account and all that. I'm just like not very. Yeah. I'm just lazy. But I think it's obviously gambling is is a huge, huge, huge industry. It is the place to be. Everything where yeah. you're going with this, you know, you're gonna have your old. You're gonna have your ex Sportsnet be like, hey, that that that. Can we? Can we jump in? Can we have some information? Can you come help us again? That's always how this happens in the industry. Uh, We got to go to break, but we have a whole lot more you want to get to with Nick Kiprios. We are drinking and binking with the former Stanley Cup champion. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Drinks with Banks. We've got Nick Kiprios here with us today. We are drinking a nice little grilled pineapple and rosemary with vodka. Cocktail is delightful. This is my Numero do. Duh. I don't even know what, what language I'm speaking because I've had a lot to drink. Mm, great start to this block. And so, Nick, I got to ask you, uh, so my boyfriend's a massive Rangers fan, and he brought up the notion you're, you're – your post-game interview when you had won the Stan- Stanley Cup, and just how <laughs> uh, he always quotes it: how you're like, you know, you know, you want to grow up being Sittler and da da da, and then yes. you know you're shooting um, what tennis balls at your sister till she's blue in the face, and and I watched it, and it is just like it's wild. Also, that your sister happens, you know, she's there, and he's in the dressing room. And so, yes. like, just just that 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 moment was just so raw and and cool and authentic. And I mean, do you remember? Do you remember it, or do you oh, kind of like? Gosh, you know, um, in writing my book, uh, it, it was like reliving all those great moments. And I've got a wonderful picture that's going to be in that book, exactly uh, what you're speaking of, and that is uh, my sister in the dressing room <laughs> uh, drinking from the Stanley Cup. And all those road hockey games where we destroy my mom's cushions from her couch to make goalie pads, and she would be my goalie. I didn't have a brother. She was, she was the one that I was firing tennis balls off her head, and it didn't matter. <laughs> and she still claims that I owe I owe her a percentage of all the money that I've made in the game. Probably. And maybe, maybe we'll 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 come to some uh, financial agreement. She should have played for Team Canada. Does, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But those were great memories. And thank you to you and your boyfriend for uh, for mentioning that, because uh, it was a very special time in my life. Yeah. And that, I, I mean, of course, the 94 Cup was uh, is just great for New Yorkers and, and watching it all. And, and when you guys won it, the, you know, there's a nugget that our, our producer found that you guys end up going to scores, which was a Messier decision because he had been to the as we call in Canada, the Rippers, the strip club. Yes, the Rippers. Yeah, 87. Do you think, like, we saw MLS a couple years ago bring the the um, the trophy MLS Cup to a, a strip club. Do you think NHLers today would ever have the guts to bring uh, the Stanley Cup to a strip club? Or are they all kind of a little too weary of social media and, like, cancel culture and all that stuff? Oh, gosh. Um, the answer is, uh, I think think we still have uh we'll, we'll have many more opportunities to see uh the cup at rippers How, how's that <laughs> i think i i think that uh they're very sensitive and they want to do uh you know everything the right way and be very respectful but they'll they'll still be a part of them that says this is my cup 
and I'll make the decisions. And if I want to take it uh, to a certain place, a certain establishment, then that's mm -hmm. I've earned the right. And I you won't get an argument out of me. I can tell you that. Yeah, I feel like at that moment, yeah, the, it, the hardest professional trophy to win, essentially, in my opinion, I think you would obviously agree. Um, and but my producer is telling me that they did try to ban it, at least the NHL strip clubs. Uh, if if they did, I'm certainly glad they didn't in, in my era. How's <laughs> yeah. that? Yeah, I, as you're talking to former NHLers, a lot more stuff happened that you, you know, today you get caught doing anywhere. Some, someone's probably literally Instagramming me from some apartment around here just being like, who is this doing this right now? You because know, I would I do that I used to, to worry, them. Julie, I used to worry that you, you leave your front door and you're being videotaped. But as you just mentioned, uh, it, it could be happening as we speak oh, right yeah. now. Oh, that, yeah. That's how crazy it is. It is. It is a, a, a crazy world out there. And we have a lot of crazy questions we want to ask Nick Kiprios about his world. When we come back after this break, we are here drinking and binking with former Stanley Cup champion NHL analyst Nick Kiprios. Don't go anywhere. I'm Adnan Verk from DAZN. And guess what? I satisfied my thirst with drinks with Binks. Hey guys, welcome on back. Drinks with Binks with Nick Kiprios. We're playing a game now called Truth or Sip. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. You can either tell the truth or you can sip. And I think we're going to ask like four, uh, five or six questions. I don't know, but you, you, you can't sip them all, okay? <laughs> you can't waste all your sips up front. Or you can if you want. Okay, first off, worst coach you've ever had? I had, I had good coaches here. Pick it up, pick it's it up. It's not fair for me to say it's not fair for me to say Mike Keenan, but I I I will say Mike Keenan and it's not for the reasons why you would think. I thought he was uh, a guy that got the job done. We won the Stanley right. Cup. You can never deny it, but you know, how far he pushed to to make it happen, how many how many people that he had to kind of almost break to make it happen, uh probably too many to my liking. Okay. So um, okay, Mike Keenan. I will say. Worst coach you've ever had. All right, we got to pick a these up a bit. I, I, no, Mike won the Stanley Cup. Yeah, so well, I, you already said his name, so it's out know, there. So that's, right. that's too bad for you. You didn't sip on that one, I guess. <laughs> um, all right, let's, we'll pick this up. Team you played for that you wish you could scrub from your resume. It, it meant so much to me to put the jersey on for the Toronto Maple Leafs but it wasn't a great experience for me. It wasn't because the team was on the downside. It started getting stripped. They traded the likes of Doug Gilmore. They traded the likes of Kirk Muller. You know, if I could strip that, that outside of my childhood dream okay. coming true, if I could strip that, those losses, I would strip those with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Wow, wild stuff here. Strip and get out of town, Toronto Maple Leafs. Most rated player in the NHL right now. Overrated. Uh, right now, uh, uh, Jack Eichel, and it's got nothing to do with his talent, but everything to do with his ability to make people around him better. Okay. Uh, last one. Um, I haven't sipped yet. What's going on? What would you do if you saw Ryan Vandenbush? I would um, crack open a little Buddha, and I'd, I'd cheer him for, for playing the game hard. I thought you were going to say crack open his head. No. And, and just sort Listen, of like, I, you know, I, give him a little I, of your I, I talked a lot about it, Julie. Uh, people think that I would hate him for, for ending my career with one punch at Madison Square Garden. And it couldn't be uh, further from the truth. He played the game hard. He beat me fair and square. And I dusted myself off and, and broadcasted for 21 years after that. So... Not a bad consolation prize yeah, for Yeah, and for who knows what that career. guy's doing now. Uh, nothing. Nothing like Nick Kiprios here on Drinks oh, with Banks. No, no. Ryan's a good we man. we got to go Ryan's to break. Man. But that was a lot of fun. No sipping at all. Just all truth. But we will sip on this little Buddha. We're here at Nick Kiprios. Don't go anywhere. Drinks with Banks.
Well, guys, we've had an awesome time drinking and binking here with Nick Kiprios, former NHL Stanley Cup champion and analyst, Real Kipper at noon. Uh, Kipper, what do you got going on these days? Where can we find you next? Well, I got my daily show. It's called Real Kipper at Noon. You can find it on linemovement.com. It's in association with uh, i3 uh, Interactive. They are an online gaming company. Uh, their their, uh, their uh, betting site is called Blitzbet. And they are a public traded company under the Canadian Stock Exchange, BETS. And I'm thrilled to be a part of them, providing them their hockey coverage, their content, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, the, the next stage of my career. As far as Little Buddha is concerned, we launched this uh, probably about uh, 12, 14 months ago. It's been in the LCBO here in Ontario. We hope to branch it out throughout uh, Canada and eventually the U.S., but it checks all the boxes, 90 calories, no sugar, gluten-free, uh, keto-friendly. Super and, basic. And uh, one day I'll understand what all that family. means. And. And, and the last one is my books coming out, uh, Julie, in the fall. It's called Undrafted. Uh, you can pre-order it through Simon Schuster. It's, uh, I hope, an inspiring story about um, a Toronto boy that grew up to fulfill his dream. And uh, for all the can't-miss prospects, uh, there's others who find a way to still get there, and, and I hope people can relate to it. So I'm looking forward to that book coming out. October 20th. Very inspiring story. And now you're just dominating the world in so many different regards. Thank you so oh, much for gosh. being with us here today. Very tasty drink. I'm going to definitely chug the rest of this as I am going to then now go check out all of Fubo's other content on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Make sure you can also listen to this episode and, and many others of Drinks with Binks on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you get your podcast. Guys, keep on drinking and binking, bitches. We'll see you next week.